Hi, good afternoon. Uh, we're going to continue a little bit of Shir Shirim. We're still to, we're at the end of the first section, the first song of Shir Shirim. Um, we've gone through different understandings of the of the of the psukim here. But as well as hopefully we'll get into more of a cohesive approach of how to, uh, you know, get more of a central understanding of the ideas, and then, you know, then come into more different uh, pirushim. But for today, I would I would love to share a beautiful gra, the biur gra and shirashirim is unbelievable, and he has a lengthy explanation, um, explaining the difference between. Um, the psukim here and how to understand them. So I'm going to try and remember it. I don't have the copy with me here and I, f- I, didn't, I thought I would have one here. So I'll see how much I remember. And hopefully, uh, with uh, we'll we'll get out something out of it. So we said that the first song is talking about the, um, the beloved being distant from the lover. So I forgot, who's the, the lover is the, is the woman? Let's forget this. Um, okay. One of the two. So there's the the dod in Hebrew. The dod is the is the is the is the man, and the and the raya is the is the woman. So so here it says as follows that there's there's something called wine, right? My, your love is better than wine. And then it says the smell of your oils. I remember the smell of your oils and the flowing oils has a great smell which invites the, the maidens, the other maidens. So we saw in Rashi that it's referring to the different people in the nations that heard the, the miracles of Hashem and came to convert to, to the Jewish people, to join the Jewish people. So the, the, the Gra, it goes into explaining the difference between the, the Torah that the Jewish people received and the Torah that the non-Jewish people have. It was a very interesting thing. So he says as follows, that there's something called taste and there's something called smell. So he says there's four senses that exist in the, in the, in the head. Sight, smell, sight, um, hearing, smell, and, and taste. So he says that during the sin of Adam, the, 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 the pleasure from sight and hearing was completely removed. There's no physical, like, there's enjoyment in looking at something nice or hearing something, and good music, but it's not a, a physical pleasure that is a sensory pleasure felt by the, by the ears or the eyes. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to smell, smell was reduced significantly. The only physical sensory pleasure we have is the mouth, and is thinking. taste. Thinking. Again, so thinking is also a pleasure, but it's not a sensory pleasure. It's not like the taste buds are feeling something. Like, um, f- the f- yeah. physical touch is probably the most um, f- pleasure, um, f- like actual sensory pleasure. Um, thinking, I guess, is, is more of a spiritual pleasure, in a way. So he says that the 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 concept of physical of taste is something that's very tangible, something that's very. Exp- he says that is compared to physical physical pleasures. Whereas spiritual pleasures are associated with smell because they're less tangible. They're like a, more of a uh, like a loose, uh, elusive kind of uh, pleasure. So he says that that represents heaven and earth. Heavenly pleasures are spiritual pleasures, which spiritual pleasures you they're not like as um, strong. A person that experiences spiritual pleasure, there's a pleasure here, but it's not like a you know it doesn't get your heart shaking as much as physical pleasure. So he says as follows, he says, oh, I'm trying to remember, if I remember everything. So he says that the written Torah, Torah Shebikhtav, is a general Torah. It doesn't have that many, it doesn't, even, even the commandments in the written Torah are not written in a way of a commandment. It's written in a story. Shem told Moshe, go and tell the Jews to do so and so. It never actually says, this is the halakha, do it. It's, 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 a, it's a story, it's, it's almost a, you, can, you can look at it as a history book. Even the commandments are a history book. Whereas the written Torah, whereas the oral Torah is actually full of halachot, like commandments, do this, do that, mitzvot. So he says that the, 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 the difference between the, the non-Jews and the Jews is that the Torah, the Torah, the written Torah was given also to the non-Jews. 
Or it was. Yeah, that's what he says. Hmm. And he says that's why, um, but they don't have mitzvot, because mitzvot is the ability to bring godliness into details of life, into the, into the physical level of day-to-day -day life. And that is, uh, in a way, bringing God down in, even into the lower aspect of life, not connecting to God's existence abstractly or conceptually, rather actually living it out in, in, in the day-to-day -day life. So he says that a, a Jew has a nefesh, this is the nefesh and the ruach, now the ruach is connected to smell, connected to the heaven, whereas the nefesh is the lower aspect of, of a being, which is connected to physical activity. So he says that a Jew, a, a non-Jew, and both a Jew and a non-Jew have a ruach, a holy ruach, which is what gives them the connection to Torah, the written Torah. Whereas what the Jews received that had Matan Torah that was unique to the Jewish people was the physical Torah, which is why, why? because the nefesh is a very interesting thing. The nefesh comes from the Eretz, from the physical land. And because the Jewish people have the physical land of Israel, which is a holy land, so that's where the nefesh of the Jewish people is able to be holy. So it's not just a, a spiritual holiness, it's an actual physical, tangible, like earthy holiness, which is the concept of mitzvot, which is the ability to, to, to kind of go to bring God into places that you wouldn't think God exists or like, mm -hmm. is godly to, to, to do mitzvah. So he says, if I remember, let's read it if I remember how he explains it in the Pesukim. So he says, So that's talking about wine, is the taste of wine, that's, that's a strong flavor. All of the nations also received the smell aspect of Torah, which is the written Torah. And then he says, Mashcheni Acharecha, Narutza, bring, pull me after you, and we will all run after you together, the nations and the Jewish people, all of them together. But Heviani HaMelech Hadarav, to be brought into the inner chambers of doing mitzvot, Nazkira Tadecha Miyayin, that level of taste is, uh, is unique to the Jewish people, and that's what uh, we're thanking Hashem for in this song. So I think I butchered it a little bit, but that's how much I remember. Thank you very much, everyone, and we'll be back next week.